autumn. <laughs> Since I'm an American who's lived in England for over 20 years, I don't really know anymore whether I naturally say autumn or autumn. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how I say it anymore. Um, that's, that's why my accent is all mixed and weird. And I know some new subscribers recently have been asking, where do you come from? But uh, that's, that's your answer. So, um, so yeah, I'm kind of muddled. But honestly, uh, this season, uh, fall, um, this is my favorite season of the year because I was born and bred in New England. So I'm naturally more accustomed to moderate climates. I don't do well in in very hot weather and I just really enjoy this time of year uh, to be able to to read and relax and you know I have a theory about beach reads you know beach reads are sort of notoriously like easy reading and I think the reason for that is because when someone is reading under a very hot sun their brain is slowly boiling away and so you need simpler words on the page just to in order to be able to comprehend them anyway the point of this video is is to make an autumnal reading list and I have a dozen books here uh, whose subject matter or maybe even just the covers of the books I think sort of suit this time of year and will go along well with um, my increased reading time uh, inside looking outside the window as the leaves fall off from the trees and I'd love to know if you have any particular books that you want to read around autumn just because they they sort of match the the time period period or maybe they're just books that you've been wanting to get to and, and this will be a good time of year to start spending more time inside and, and reading more. So first off, I want to talk about a couple of non-fiction books and the, the, the rest of the books will be fiction, but uh, but I, I don't read all that much non-fiction and I, I do want to get to this book, uh, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake, because uh, this just recently won uh, the Wainwright Prize, which is an environmental book award, and this one uh, the Global Conservation Prize and I, I got to go to the ceremony recently and I read some of the books that were nominated for the prize before then but I didn't get to this one yet and I, I really like the sound of it and uh, I had a lovely time at the ceremony. I went along with Bob the Booker and uh, and yeah it was just a really lovely atmosphere. It was out on the Barnes uh, wetlands and um, I'd never been to the center there before and just the whole surrounding area is really beautiful and um, so yeah, that was really lovely. And yes, this was the winner. And uh, it doesn't have a gorgeous cover. And I'm a sucker for gorgeous covers. So uh, so that really draws me to it. But also the subject of it just sounds fascinating. It's the story of fungi and how our lives are sort of, and all life on the planet really is entangled with fungi and and normally when I think of fungi I just think of mushrooms you know growing in the forest but really there's so much more than that there are fungi which exist on a microscopic level and then there are massive organisms um, that are fungi as well and uh, and yeah and just the the way they connect with all different forms of life throughout the history of the planet is really fascinating that's what he um, explores in in this book and uh, so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to to finally reading this and then I have a book called the heating um, which is also has a gorgeous cover and also has gorgeous insides because uh, it is poetry written by Rob Cohen and it is illustrations by by Nick Hayes and you can see on the inside it's like all burnished gold and and it just like suits this like period of, of year really well and look at these beautiful illustrations and so yeah it's poetry um recounting the year of 2020 and uh, and it's sort of the subject is kind of covering uh, that period of time but not sort of looking at the big world events that were occurring over the, the year, it, it does sort of brush up against those, but is looking more at local life and 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 taking account of, of local life and how that changed over the, the course of the past year. And uh, so, yeah, it just sounds like such a, a fascinating book. And it's endorsed by Robert McFarlane, um, whose writing I think is excellent. And so I really trust his taste. Now, interestingly, the author Rob Cohen um, also published a, a book called Common Ground. 
and uh, and that's the name of the next book that I, I want to read. Um, although this is a, a novel called Common Ground, which is the debut novel by Naomi Ishiguro, and the cover of this sort of reflects an autumnal theme uh, as well. And also the subject of it is about a boy uh, that starts at a new school, and when autumn comes around, I inevitably think about going back to school, even though I haven't gone to school for quite a long time, but I, I still have uh, sort of painful memories of, of like the dread of having to go back to school in September time. And uh, and so this is about uh, that, a boy starting at a new school, and he um, feels very isolated and lonely, and he meets another boy there that he becomes good friends with. And uh, then it follows the story many years later um, when they've lost touch, and then they meet up again, and it's about how their lives have changed, and uh, yeah, and so it's about that friendship over a, a long period of, of time. Now we're getting into the kind of spooky books of the autumnal period, and uh, so I have this novel called Gargoyles by Harriet Mercer, and it's about a woman uh, in England who shortly before her 40th birthday, um, she comes down with a serious illness and is taken to hospital, and while she's there, um, she starts to have these hallucinations, and behind her eyes, she starts to vision these gargoyles, these soul-sucking gargoyles behind her eyes, which uh, are yet speaking to her. And uh, yeah, it just sounds like such creepy, uh, kind of terrifying subject matter, and yeah, just seems appropriate for, for these sorts of days. Now recently, I just received a copy of the third book in John Foss's Septology uh, trilogy, and uh, this is the second book in that trilogy, and I, I, since I haven't read it yet, uh, that third book reminded me that I need to get to the second book, because I really enjoyed the first book, and it's about a painter in Norway uh, called Asle, who lives on his own and uh, has this sort of religious, these religious ideas and his like dedication to, to painting, but also he has a doppelganger in the nearby town um, who's also called Osle and also a painter, uh, but who's had a much more failed life. And in this book, it goes back into his memories um, when these doppelgangers first met and their first interactions with each other. And, and so it's such a fascinating look at the psychology of uh, an artist. And uh, and because of the the prose are like quite melancholy and lonely and also slightly trippy and hallucinatory because it sort of moves out in and out of memories in a way that kind of is like brushing up against reality, like dreams are sort of brushing up against reality. And and uh, and I just find his style of writing so fascinating. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, to reading more of this work. Brood by Jackie Paulson, and this is a novel about chickens. And uh, a lot of people were talking about this earlier this year, and I'd meant to read it and just didn't get around to it. And it's about a woman um, who's trying to keep alive her four chickens over the course of the year, and each chicken has a name and a personality, I think, and so you get to know these chickens over that period. And it just sounds like a, a very saccharine story from that description. But actually, I think it's it's a more meaningful uh, account of, of motherhood and grief. And, uh, and her writing is likened uh, to Elizabeth Strout and Jenny Offal, um, who are two authors that I really like. And so, uh, so I think I'll really enjoy this book. Now, going from chickens uh, to a cockerel, um, there's a cockerel on, on uh, on the cover of this novel, uh, The Son of the House, um, which is a novel I've heard really great things about and is about two different women in Nigeria in, 19, in the 1970s, and they come from very different economic backgrounds. Um, one is from a more like working class background, and the other one comes from a more privileged background. Um, but it, it follows their, their different struggles and how, because of the uh, political events in the country, they both uh, end up in this quite like strained situation and so it follows the drama of their their different stories and what was happening to women in, in Nigeria during this time. The Night Always Comes by Willie Vlotten and this is an author I've never read before but I've always meant to read him uh, because I saw the film uh, based on his novel uh, Lean on Pete and that was such a brilliant and moving 
movie that uh, I just know that the the story that that uh, film originated from uh, must be really good as well. And actually, my partner has read this novel and said it's it's really excellent. And so, yeah, it's one I've been wanting to get to. And it's the story of a young woman who is really struggling to get by. Um, she is caring for her younger brother, and she's also working two low-paid jobs. And she's also taking part-time uh, courses at a at a college. And she wants to to purchase the mortgage on the property that she's renting with her family and it's about her struggles to do that and it takes place over a two-day period um, when the possibility of that is is uh, sort of falling out of her grasp and uh, and it follows the drama of, of that. Cowboy Graves by Roberto Bellano. <laughs> I love saying this author's name, uh, though I've never read him before and I think this will be a, a fun place to start because this is actually a collection of three novellas and so uh, Cowboy Graves, um, the, the title novella, is about a man that uh, returns to his native country after a coup is taking place and then he joins in the, the fight for socialism. And then the other two novels, um, one is about a, a man that is drawn into this uh, clandestine uh, surrealist group. Uh, and then uh, the third novella is uh, about a poet that lives through the, the fascist overthrow of his country and, uh, and loses the, the woman that he loves. The Woman in the Purple Skirt by Natsuko Imamura. And this is a novel about a woman woman uh, in a purple skirt who follows the same routine every day, going to her local park and eating a pastry, but she doesn't interact with anyone she meets along the way um, or any of the children that try to get her attention. And so she has this very mysterious quality to her, And but uh, someone is following her and observing everything she does, and there's a very special reason for it. So it sounds like quite a mysterious story, and so yeah, just sort of seems to suit this time of year and also the uh, the color of this cover sort of matches my top, doesn't it? Andrea Vitrix by Lorenc Villalonga. And this is part socio-political essay and part dystopian fiction about a future set in Mallorca in the year uh, 2050 in a future society that is done away with family and gender. And I think that just sounds so fascinating. Uh, this is a uh, yeah, new dystopian book that I've just been really really wanting to get to. And finally, I have another novel that looks at an alternate sort of society. Uh, that This is Arcadia by Emmanuel Bayamak Tam. And uh, the, the cover of this, I just think, yeah, really resonates with the, the autumnal period. And it's uh, about a child that grows up in an intentional community. And then when that child becomes a teenager, learns that they are intersex. And so starts to question the, the values and the principles of the community uh, around them and what gender means and uh, yeah, larger quest questions about what it means to be part of a community. And I just think that sounds like such a fascinating storyline. So those are uh, a number of the books that I want to read over the autumnal period. I'd love to know if you've read any of these books and if you would recommend them or if you're curious to read any of them now or if you have any other books that you're particularly looking forward to getting to uh, over this autumn period. <laughs> so uh, thank you for watching and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.